Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video in our Surface Mastery series, I want to talk a bit about the process of leaving sketches underdefined and when it can be of benefit to a design. So this part is a motocross handguard, and this is something that we designed in a new series we released on our website, learneverythingaboutdesign.com. If you want to check out that course, you can go ahead and go to the link in the description, check it out, see if it's something that you want to purchase. But in this video, we're going to talk about the general workflow that we used in that course. So what I want to talk about is the ability to leave a design underdefined. And the main reason that I would do this is when I'm complex surfacing and I work with 2D projected curves into 3D, a lot of times it's hard to figure out how you want these surfaces and these shapes to work in 3D. So the way that we approach this is by using a 2D layout sketch that's underdefined. It allows us to make changes, drag geometry around, and figure out how we want the shapes to work in 3D. And then after we're done, we can go back and we can make some sort of dimensions or constraints to lock things down. Now, the power of this is also a little bit of a curse because some features might not update very well. For example, on this design, we actually have a hex pattern, and the hex pattern is cut into the solid after the fact. Now, there are cases where we can make general changes, for example, changing the angle of this edge here and allowing it to rebuild all the surface changes, all of the other features, but you'll notice that it broke something in the projection of this sketch. Now, that's not universally true. If we didn't have complex shapes like this hex pattern cut out, most of the time these updates will be just fine and we don't have to worry about it. But in general, we can use this technique to change and drive complex 3D shapes. Now, this is a simple example looking at a 2D layout because this sketch was used to trim away excess surfaces. But if we take a look at actually changing the shape more drastically, for example, this upper surface, or what we're calling the secondary surface, if we needed to change the overall curvature of that, we can pull these curves in 2D. These are our 2D projected curves. And we can change the overall shape of this design by looking at it in its 3D state. Now, I strongly suggest that you do this at the 2D sketch level and you work with it when it's still in a surface form and not in a solid form. Once you get to the solid form, the rebuilds take quite a bit longer. Surfaces tend to update almost instantly. So for an example like this, if I go back before the thicken and I expand the bodies folder and I just have the surface body, the surfaces update quicker than the solids would. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this top upper section here. And if I pull this back, the surface rebuilds quite a bit quicker than the solid does. So something to consider if you're exploring complex 3D surfaces and you want to play around with the general shape, you're not quite set on how everything should look, you can use this method to play around with a 2D layout sketch or 2D curves that are projected to make these 3D shapes and figure out what you want your final design to look like before you commit to adding all of those small details like vented patterns in your design. Now, once again, this is part of our recently released advanced surfacing course on learneverythingaboutdesign.com. So if you want to learn how to do this and follow along, you can go ahead and check out the link in the description for that course. But hopefully this gives you enough information to explore this topic on your own. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.